So good afternoon and thanks for joining another lecture. Today we will finish the topic related to pipe and pumps and from next lecture we will go towards open channel flows. Today I will make some examples in front of you which are extremely important for you and for your exam. So, where are we? The main goal when dealing with a, with a flow in a pipe is to compute the losses. Losses can be classified into two types, major and minor. Major losses are due to the viscosity of the fluid. You, you, you cannot neglect this type of losses because every fluid will always have a certain viscosity. So, major, lo major loss is always present in a certain flow. When dealing with a major loss, we write the pressure drop or the pressure loss as delta P equal to F, which multiplies a certain quantity, 1 over 2, rho u power 2, L over D. The goal is to find F. F is called friction coefficient or friction factor. In order to compute F, we first have to look at the flow and ask, is it laminar or turbulent? If the flow is laminar, you immediately say that F will be 64 divided by Reynolds. That's it. If the flow is turbulent, instead of using 64 over Reynolds, you will, lose, you will use another formula, 0 0.316 Reynolds to the power minus 1 over 4. The situation becomes more complicated if you account for the roughness of the pipe where the fluid is flowing. You can imagine that a very rough pipe will induce, will, have more, will give more friction to the fluid, will induce a larger pressure drop. In order to account for the effect of the roughness of the pipe, we have to use Moody's chart. In Moody's chart, we enter with two values, Reynolds number, the roughness of the pipe, and we read the corresponding value of the friction factor. Anyway, we are in the position to compute F, and then we can compute delta P. To the pressure loss in the pipe, we can associate another quantity called head loss. Head loss is computed by dividing delta P by rho G. Rho is the density of the fluid, G is the gravity acceleration. So major loss is always present, but your flow can be characterized by minor losses, are called minor because as we saw last time, the, their magnitude is significantly smaller than the one due to the viscosity. Major losses are due, to, are due to topological changes in your flow. What do I mean? You have a straight pipe, and at a certain point, you change its section. You bend it. You change the shape of your pipe. Minor losses are local events. It means that they apply they happen when there is an event, an event making this as a change in the cross-section. 
you might have one minor loss to millions. Okay? Typically, we are interested to know the um, minor losses due to the entrance and the exit of the pipe. Minor losses can be, will induce a delta P. We write delta P due to the minor losses as a certain coefficient K multiplying rho u power 2 divided by 2, where u, the velocity, is the velocity where the event is happening. So, for example, is the velocity when you are changing your section. K is a coefficient which, uh, which is determined experimentally. You can associate to the delta p due to a minor loss a head loss, h, again by divided by rho g. A certain pipe with some topological changes will undergo both minor and major losses. The total pressure drop will be the sum of the single contributions. The total head loss will be the sum of the single contributions. That's it. This is what you need to know when we deal with a single isolated pipe. Are you convinced about it? Okay. Let's make things more complicated. Now we are going to see what happens when you have a system composed of two or more pipes. Specifically, you can have two cases. First one, pipes are displaced in series. You have pipe one, at the end of pipe one you have pipe two, pipe three, pipe four, and so on. When you have pipes in series, you have to remember just two things. First, the flow rate is constant. It means that the flow rate in pipe 1, Q1, will be equal to the flow rate in pipe 2, Q2, equal to Q3, equal a certain quantity. Let's call it Q. Flow rate is constant. The head loss in the system will be the sum of the single head losses. Delta P, or H, will receive three contributions. This is due to pipe 1. This pipe 2. This pipe 3. You can see that in, both, in all the three contributions, you can immediately identify a major loss F1, F2, and 3 and minor losses, K1, K2, K3. So, pipes in series. Whatever section you will choose, you will always have the same flow rate. So, flow rate is constant through the whole system. Head or pressure losses the total pressure or head loss of the system is the sum of the single pressure or head losses. Each single contribution will receive a certain portion from the major loss, which we identify in the presence of the friction factor, and contributions from minor losses, where you see the coefficient k. Are you convinced? The formula we saw before can be rearranged in another way. I will not ask you to remember this formula. In case you need it, it will be provided. No worries. But what I want to underline is this formula. This 
the flow rate is linked to the delta P friction major and minor losses through this formula. Second family, pipes in parallel. In this case, the situation is reversed. The flow rate in the system is the sum of the single contributions. Here we have three pipes. The total flow rate is the sum of the three. You can have one million of pipes, you sum up over one million. On the other hand, the head loss in each single pipe is the same. So the delta P, or H, in pipe one is equal to the one in pipe two, which is in turn equal to the one in pipe three. Let's recap. We have a system composed of two or more pipes. The system can be arranged in two ways. First, pipes in series. You have pipe one, pipe two, pipe three, pipe four, and so on. In this case, the flow rate is constant. It means that whatever section you will take in your system, you will always have the same flow rate. The pressure or head loss of the system is the sum of the single contributions. Each single contribution will account for major and minor losses. Major losses, friction coefficient. Minor losses, K coefficient. Then we have pipes in parallel. Here, the flow rate sum up, sums up. So you have three pipes. The total flow rate is the sum of the free contribution. You can imagine that if the flow rate is coming from the, from the left, then it will split in three parts, and then it will reconnect on the right. So the flow rate sums up. The head loss of the system of each pipe is the same. So you will have just one head or pressure loss for your system of pipes in parallel. It means that you can compute for one and you have for everyone. Now, let me make some examples with you. The, ex the examples I'm going to make are likely to be faced during the exam and during the midterm test. By likely, again, I mean extremely likely. So, guys, please stop me, something is not clear. In this point, I have a certain device, a pump. I will explain later the role of the pump, which has to drive flow through a system composed of two pipes in parallel. The section where there is the pump, I will call it one. 
the section where we have the when they reconnect I will call it 2 I will call this pipe pipe A I will call this pipe pipe B pipe A has a certain length a certain diameter a certain friction factor pipe B has a certain length a certain diameter and a certain friction factor I might be very kind and tell you to neglect minor losses it means that the K factor the K factors are not present in your problem I would like to know the flow rate at the point 2 here let's start solving this problem then we will see that in order to solve it we need another small ingredient pipes are in parallel right what does it mean the flow rate please Okay, so it means that the flow rate at the exit, section 2, will be the sum of two contributions, right? Yes. Q1 Q plus Q2. So do you agree? QA plus QB, right? Pipes are in parallel. The flow rate sum up, sums up. The head loss in each single pipe is the same. So I can write that HA is equal to HB. Through a formula that will be provided, but you just have to look at what we saw before, we can write HA as 8 QA power 2 divided by pi power 2 g d a power 4 f a a lay over d a equal to 8 q b power 2 pi power 2 g d b power 4 f b l b db Sir? please yes when you have a pipe uh, a system of pipes in parallel you assume that the flow rate will be the sum of the contributions and the head loss in each single pipe will be the same so the head loss of the system is the head loss of each single pipe I can write this which I can simplify like this do you agree? please eight Okay, when you substitute the flow rate with the velocity. Now, we are here. I can make your life a bit easier. For example, I can tell you that the two pipes have the same diameter. And I can say that the two pipes have the same friction factor. 
which means dA equal to dB, fA equal to fB. Maybe you agree that I can do this. Now the problem is drastically easier. We can rearrange and we obtain that QB is square root of LA over LB QA. Please. Wait, so when, when the flow slowly turns and the friction factor is, is dependent on Reynolds number and only depends on roughness, how did you get, oh, so FA is equal to FB because how did you get that? No, no. In the, at the exam, I can give you the values. I can tell you, for example, FA equals to 0 0.02 and FB equal to 0 0.03. But if the pipes are, are made of the very same material, the roughness will be the same. So the friction factor will be the same. Right? Do you agree that I arrive at this conclusion? QB equal to square root of LA over LB, QA. Where, actually, if the two pipes have the very same length, what happens? QB is equal to QA. It means that the flow will split equally between the two pipes. But let me remind you this. So the total flow rate, Q, which is QA plus QB, can be written as QA 1 plus square root of LA over LB. Do you agree? Right. At this point, I still cannot solve this problem because I have, a, I have to introduce something else. I mentioned that this flow is driven by a certain pump. A pump pushes the flow and pushes it to move through the two pipes. We have to add some ingredients related to how a pump will work. Please have a look at this graph. When you buy a pump, this pump will be provided with this graph, you have three quantities, H, eta, and DHP against the flow rate. DHP is the brake horse power of your pump. Every pump, like the engine in a car, are characterized by a certain DHP card. Then you can drive a certain flow with a certain flow rate Q and induce a certain head loss H. The green curve is the curve of the efficiency, which is computed as Q delta P divided the breakers power. Eta as a maximum which represents the optimal efficiency of a certain pump, also known as best efficiency point. Thank you. So, you buy a pump, this graph will be provided to you. When we study a pump, we can do a dimensional analysis. Let's do it. First, 
we identify the variables. The flow rate, the rotational speed. You can imagine that this pump is spinning in order to, make the, to drive the flow. <coughs> Diameter, density of the fluid, viscosity of the fluid, epsilon is the roughness. Six variables, three dimensions, three dimensionless groups. We have RE, Reynolds number, CQ, capacity coefficient, and the normalized roughness. And we have three dependent variables, CH, CQ, and eta. CH is the head coefficient, CQ is the power coefficient, CP, sorry, is the power coefficient, and eta is the efficiency. Each pump, let me see, each pump, as I showed you before, is characterized, let's point this, by a certain relation between eta, by, between h and q, an equation. This equation usually is written in this form. H is equal to alpha a, a alpha minus beta q power 2 where alpha and beta are provided by the supplier are two coefficient in our case at the exam I can tell you that you bought a certain pump with a certain characteristic equation in the form H equal to 36 minus 40 Q power 2. This is the equation of the pump you bought. Having in mind this, I can, up, I can go back to the example I did before, and I can build on another consideration, that the head loss, about the head loss in the system. The delta H your system is equal to the delta H provided by the pump. The pump is driving the flow. The flow will find some obstacles, typically the friction. Okay. The, pu the pump has to fight against what is happening in pipe 1 and what is happening in pipe 2. Right. So the pipe has to overcome the resistance due to the friction in pipe 1 and the resistance due to the friction in pipe 2. So the pipe has to fight against the head loss in pipe A and the head loss in pipe B. Head loss in pipe A plus head loss in pipe B is what the pump has to fight against. And in this case, it's very nice that you can prove that the sum of the two head losses is 2, 8, pi power 2, g. Thank you. dA power 4, fA, la, 
DA QA power 2 equal to 36 minus 40 Q power 2 but maybe I can write this Are you convinced about the right hand side? You have Q, but before we wrote Q just in function of QA. So we have a pump. This pump is provided with a certain characteristic equation, which in our case is 36H equal to 36 minus 40 Q power 2. This pipe wants to drive the flow through a system of pipes in parallel. In order to drive the flow, it has to fight against the friction in pipe A and the friction in pipe B. Or if you prefer, the head that the pump has to provide to the system has to overcome the head in pipe A and the head in pipe B. Otherwise, you will not be able to drive the flow. In this example, we first apply the continuity we said before. The, the flow rate is the sum of the single contributions. And we did some simplifications because I told you that I'm very kind with you and the friction factors are the same, the diameters are the same too. Then we estimated the H, the head loss, in the single pipes. And we assume that the pump has to fight against these two head losses. So the head provided by the pipe, 36 minus 40 Q power 2, is equal to the head losses in the two pipes. We obtain this equation where we know FA, LA, and DA because these are inputs of the problem. We have just one unknown, QA. Do we agree that we can solve for QA? Right. So from this equation, we obtain QA. And then, the flow rate at the point two, where the two pipes reconnect, is QA, one plus square root of LA over LB. And you know LA and LB. Now the question is, will you be able to solve this problem at the exam? Let me rephrase the question. Who is convinced to be able to solve this problem at the exam? Few brave people. Do you want me to repeat this problem? Yes? Immediately, just ask. Guys, please. We have a certain pump. You buy this pump, okay? This pump will be provided with a certain characteristic equation. This equation is a link between H and Q. In our case, it's H equal to 36 minus 40 Q power 2. This is called characteristic equation of a pump. You want to use this pump to drive the flow in a system composed of two pipes. Each pipe has some geometrical parameters, a certain friction factor, a certain length, a certain diameter. We want to estimate the flow rate in the section two, where the two pipes will reconnect 
Let's adopt the concept we saw before. So, pipes in parallel, it means that the flow rate sum up. The flow rate at the section two will receive a contribution from QA and a contribution from QB. So I can write this, right? Okay, here, I just substitute the corresponding values. This formula will be provided, no worries. So I can write that formula. I can start simplifying pi power 2, pi power 2, g, g, 8, 8. And then I can make some further simplifications, saying, for example, that the two diameters are identical, the two friction factors are identical. Just the two lengths are different. So, dA equal to dB, FA equal to FB. I can simplify further, right? Do you agree that I can write this? Okay. And if I take this expression of QB and I put it here, do you agree that I obtain this one? So the flow rate is expressed just as a function of QA, okay? But in this equation, I know LA, I know LB, I do not know QA, I do not know Q. So I have one equation with two unknowns, I cannot solve it. I have to add another ingredient. In order to add another ingredient, I build on the problem which assigned me a pump. And we say that this pump will provide an increment of the head in order to fight against the head loss in pipe A and the head loss in pipe B. So I just write the head loss in the two pipes being equal to the head increment given by the pump. That's why I can write this. I have everything except QA, right? So I can solve for QA. It's just a matter of substituting the corresponding numbers. Once you have QA, you can come back to this expression, substitute, and obtain the flow rate. That's it. Now, let me pose another question. Who is convinced to be able to solve, the system, to solve this problem? Oh, a larger number of people. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Is equal, yes. So so where do you get DA is equal What? If the material if they are made by a different material? You ask me this. Yes, of course. What happens? The, the procedure is identical. Guys, please have a look at this. Here, we did many simplifications because we say dA equal to dB and FA equal to FB, right? But if FA is different from FB, it doesn't matter at all. You will just put the numbers there. That's it. Our input of the problems, so you know this. You just have to substitute the value. Please. Um, what did you get 
you get the equation for H from what we saw in the previous uh, PDF. Where, but this formula will be provided, so no worries. The 8 means because there is a 4, which, um, let me find it. Okay, this was the original formula. Okay. Then you have the velocity power 2. But the velocity you can write in this way. So it's 4 to the power 4 divided by 2. It's a matter of substitutions. Who is not convinced? Say now. Tell me. Exactly. So it means it's equal. That's correct. Your pump has to fight against two pipes, right? Yeah. So you compute the head loss in one pipe, and you have the same in the other one. That's why you have this factor two. If you have ten pipes, it will be ten. Okay. Guys, may I move to another example? Now, you have a certain reservoir here, which is connected to another reservoir here. The difference in the elevation, delta Z, is equal to 400 meters. This pipe has a length of 4 kilometers and a diameter of 0 0.2 meters. There is a pump to drive the flow from the bottom to the top. This pipe is provided with a certain characteristic equation. This equation is H equal to 5,000 minus 640 Q power 2. We have a pipe where we cannot neglect end losses. We have a certain coefficient K for the entrance and one for the exit. These are assigned to be 0 0.5 and 1. This pipe has a certain friction factor, F, 0 0.01. OK? So you buy a pump in order to drive the flow from the bottom to the top. You will drive the flow through a pipe of diameters 0 0.2 meters, length 4 kilometers, over a difference in the elevation of 400 meters. This pipe is made by a certain material with a certain friction factor, 0 0.01, and we will account for end losses. Each one will be characterized by a certain coefficient k. I want to know the flow rate in the pipe. Sure. 
In this case, the pipe has to fight against the friction in the pipe, the pump has to fight against the friction in the pipe, the two minor losses, one at the entrance and one at the exit, plus the difference in the elevation. In the case we saw before, the pipes were, were horizontal. In our case, we have the, the, pump, the pump has to fight against delta Z plus the losses, which we can write as 8 Q power 2 pi power 2 G F L over D power 5 plus and losses 0 0.5 L D power 4 plus 1 L D power 4 this L is not here sorry this is the total head loss in the system. You can identify something related to the difference in the elevation, delta Z. A contribution due to the friction, where you see the coefficient F, plus two additional terms due to the minor losses. In this equation, you know everything except for the flow rate. We said that this has to fight against the pump. So this is equal to 5,000 minus 640 Q power 2. Am I right? The last thing. Five thousand minus six hundred forty Q power two. This is the equation of the characteristic equation of the pump, which is provided to you. Now, please tell me. Yes, sure. If you go back to the minor and major losses, you will find this part that is due to the major loss to the friction plus this and this, which are due to exit and entrance. We have to look again at the equations, but 1 over d power 4 has the same dimension of L divided by d power 4. Or not? This is a four. This is a four. This is a five. Have a look, please, at the formulas of last of the last session, guys. Please tell me. Please repeat. All this part is a length. An head loss, the head is measured in meters. If you, do the, the, if you substitute the dimensions, you will obtain that these are meters. Guys, can I re recap? I want to drive the flow between two reservoirs. These are placed with a certain difference in the elevation, delta Z. Okay. The two reservoirs are connected by a pipe with a certain length, a certain diameter, and a certain friction factor. I want to know the flow rate in the pipe. The pump has to fight against the elevation, the difference in the elevation, major and minor losses. 
The difference in the elevation, delta z, a contribution to the major losses, a contribution to the minor losses, equal to the equation of the pipe, of the pump. I know everything except for the flow rate. I can just solve for the flow rate. That's it. I will upload a couple of videos to solve another couple of, of problems. Okay? We have no time to do it now. I believe that you have to run for a tutorial. I will go back to work.